In this video, we're going to take a look at finding the inverse of a 3x3 three three matrix. Now, in the previous video, we had a look at finding the inverse of a 2x2 two two matrix, and we saw that the method and the process was quite straightforward, not really much work to it. But for a 3x3 three three matrix, there is a lot more work involved. It's really easy to make a mistake. So, there's one example that we're going to work through here together, just going through the method and the process, and then on the next page, there's a practice question for you to have a go at. So let's get started with this example here. We've got the matrix A, and we're asked to find the inverse. Now, the first thing we're going to do here, just like we did for a 2x2 two two matrix, is start by finding the determinant. So we're looking for the A here. So this is a 3x3 three three matrix. So remember, to find the determinant of a 3x3 three three matrix, we just need to expand along a row or a column. doesn't matter which we pick here. It could be literally any row or any column. It makes sense, though, to pick a row or column which has a zero. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go along the middle row. We don't have to. You could go along the top row, the first column, for example. I'm going to go along this middle row just because we've got this zero. Now, before we do this, let's just denote our positive and negative matrix. So remember, the top left element is always positive, and it just alternates. So it looks something like this, okay? This matrix, remember, just tells which of the elements will be positive, which will be negative. So if we go along the middle row here and we expand along this row, then my first element here, this 5, this will be negative. So it's going to be minus 5 times the 2 by 2 determinant that's left from eliminating this row and this column. So I get 1, 3, 1, 2 there. So we just note that down. The zero here, obviously, when I times my 2 by 2 determinant by zero, we will just get zero. So we can just skip that element. And then the one here, again, this will be negative. So we're going to get minus one lot of the 2 by 2 determinants left from eliminating this row and this column. So 2, 1, 1, 1. Like so. Okay. So all we need to do now is evaluate this determinant here. So I'm going to get minus five lots. So one times two is two minus 1 times 3. So I'm going to get minus 1 there. So minus 5 times minus 1. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1. So that's just going to give me 1. So I've got minus 1 lot of 1. Okay, so minus 5 times minus 1 is 5. Minus 1 lot of 1 is minus 1. So 5 minus 1 giving me 4 there. So debt A is equal to 4. Now for the next stage, this is where the, there's quite a lengthy part of the working. So what I'm going to do... So I'm just going to quickly clear the screen here. Make sure you take a note of the, the, the value of the determinant here because we're going to need that at the very end. So what we need now is what we call the cofactors or the cofactor matrix. Now, like I said, this is where a lot of the work is. So we're looking for the cofactors. And the reason the cofactors is a lot of work is because essentially what we need to do is expand along either every row or every column. Essentially, it's the same thing. So what that's going to give me is 9 two by two determinants. And then obviously we need to evaluate those nine determinants. So there's a lot of work. Now, rather than trying to explain that, let me just start by doing a couple of the cofactors and hopefully it will make sense. So like I said, it's gonna be nine two by two determinants. We need quite a large matrix. Obviously it'd be three by three, but it's gonna be quite large with all the co all the determinants in it. So we start with the top left element here. So normally when we expand along a row or a column, we multiply by this element. And we take the sign as well. So let's just note the signs again. So plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, and so on. In this case, we do take the sign as what it is in the matrix here, but we don't care about the element. So we don't multiply by two. We don't multiply by minus one. We don't multiply by positive three. We don't care. We just care about the sign. So my first two by two determinant here, well, we get rid of this row and this column, and I get zero, one, one, two. So 0, 1, 1, 2. The next one, so let's just go through a few of these just so you can see the method. We'd get rid of this row and this column. 5, 1, 1, 2 then. So we're looking for that 2 by 2 determinant of 5, 1, 1, 2 there. And remember, this element here, corresponding here now, is negative. So we take the negative of this. Go along to the next element. So again, we get rid of this row, this column. So I get 5, 0, 1, 1. 5, 0, 1, 1. And remember, this element here in the top right is positive. So my next one now will be negative, and you can kind of see how this is working here. So we get rid of this row and this column. So what do I get left with? Well, I get 1, 3, 1, 2 there. So 1, 3, 1, 2. 
Again, just keep going through here. So I won't obviously explain each one there, but this is what you should get for the next few um, two by two determinants. So the next one again is positive. You should get two, three, one, two there. The next one here now, so be careful here. This will be negative and that will be two, one, one, one. The final rule then, this one here will be positive. I'm going to get one, three, zero, one. This one here will be negative corresponding to this element here. And I'm going to get two, three, five, minus one. And then for my very final element here, again, you just be getting rid of this row, this column. So I'd get left with two, one, five, zero, and this will be positive. So like we said, two, one, five, zero there. Okay. So that's where a lot of the work comes in. Like you can see, it's quite a lengthy process. So we've got nine two by two determinants here. And what I need to do now is evaluate these two by two determinants individually. So again, this is quite a lengthy process. Obviously my resulting matrix will be a three by three matrix, but it won't be quite as large in terms of the actual inside of it. So all I need to do now is just evaluate each one individually. In the interest of saving time, so this video isn't ridiculously long, I have already evaluated these determinants um, before doing the video. But what I would say here is just make sure you can do this um, by hand. So have a quick go at these, make sure you can do all nine of them. And hopefully you should get what I get here now. So just given the results, for the top row, we get minus one, minus nine, and five. For the middle row, we get one, one, minus one. And for the final row here, we get one, 13, and minus five there. Okay, so that's our three by three um, cofactor matrix. Now what we need now is the adjoint matrix. So we're looking for the adjoint. So we use ADG, ADJ to represent that. And because this is the adjoint of the matrix A, we just say the adjoint of A here. And what I do now is we take this matrix here and we transpose it. Now, obviously we haven't formally introduced the transpose of a matrix, but let me just denote the notation first. So obviously we take this matrix minus one, minus nine, five, one, one, minus one, one, 13, minus five. So for the transpose of a matrix, the notation we use is this little power of T here. Okay, and this tells us we're taking the transpose of this matrix. Now, the transpose of a matrix, it's nothing complicated. All we do is we essentially we're just switching the rows and the columns. So this row here becomes this column, this row here becomes this column, and this row here becomes this column. So the result then, would be this row becoming this column, so minus one, minus nine, and five. This row becomes this column, so one, one, minus one. And then finally, this row here becomes this column, so one, 13, and minus five there. Okay, so that's our transpose matrix. And then finally, we just need the inverse. So the inverse then, um, have we got enough room? Let's just quickly clear the part at the top here, just so we've got enough room. So get rid of that. So for the final part then, where we just give the inverse, it's very similar to what we did with a two by two matrix, where what we do is we take our determinant, we find the reciprocal, and we times it by the adjoint. So for A inverse in this case, so for A inverse, what we do is we do one over the determinant. So remember the determinant of A, we found at the beginning, that was equal to a four. And this is why some people prefer to evaluate the determinant at the end, but I like to keep it consistent with what we do with a two by two um, matrix and inverting a two by two matrix. So day is four, so we take the reciprocal of that, so that's one over four, and then we times it by the adjoint matrix. So we get one over four times this matrix here, so minus one, 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 minus nine, one, 13, and then five minus one, minus five. And there we have it. That's our inverse of the matrix A. Now it's up to you if you present the solution here by multiplying through by this scalar. So for example, you'd get minus a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, minus nine over four, a quarter, 13 over four, and so on. Completely up to you. In this case, given that the scalar is a fraction, I would just keep it like it is here. Um, but again, it doesn't matter if you multiply through, okay? But this is what you should get here. So let me just quickly double check that everything's okay here. So minus one, 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 minus nine, one, 13, and then five, minus one, minus five, perfect. So that's what we should get here, okay? So hopefully that wasn't too bad.
So there's a practice question for you to have a go at now. We've got the matrix Q, and all we want to do is find the inverse of the matrix Q. So like always, pause the video now, have a quick go, and then we'll take a look in a moment at what you should get. So hopefully you got an okay with this problem question. Let's take a look now at what you should get. So just like we did with the previous example, we're going to start by finding the determinant. So the matrix here is Q, so we're looking to find DEC Q. So we'll do that at the top here, DEC Q. So remember, it doesn't matter which row or column we go um, along and expand. Given that we've got a zero in the top row, I'm just going to expand along the top row. And remember, we start with positive, negative, positive, and so on. Okay, so that's our matrix. So the top row here will be positive, negative, positive. So we get one lot of the two by two determinant left from eliminating this row and this column. So minus one, five, two, one. The zero here, doesn't matter what the two by two determinant is, we times it by zero, so it will be zero. And then we get two lots, so this is positive because that element there is positive. So two lots of eliminating this row and this column. So one minus one, three, two. 3, 2. So evaluating this now, I get minus 1 times 1, so minus 1, minus 5 times 2, so minus 10. So I, what I get here is minus 11 times it by 1. So I get minus 11. This determinant now, so I do 1 times 2, so that's 2. And then we minus minus 1 times 3, so that's the same as adding 3. So what I get here is 5, so 2 times by 5 is 10. So minus 11 plus 10. So in that case, for deck Q, what I get here then is minus 11 plus 10, giving me minus 1 there. Okay, so we found the determinant to start with. Now what we need to do is the lengthy part and find the cofactors. So let's just clear everything here, just so we've got enough room. And let's have a go now at finding the cofactors or the cofactor matrix. So for the cofactors, remember before we start with the cofactors, let's just give the matrix of positive and negative so we will need this. There we go. So for the cofactors, like we said, we just go along um, each row now and expand as we go. So if we start in the top left here, we get rid of this row and this column, and we're going to get minus one, five, two, one. Remember, we don't times by the element here. We're not bothered what that is, but we do keep to the signs as we go. So if we just do that again, so that's going to be minus 1, 5, 2, 1 there. Minus 1, 5, 2, 1. The next element then, so we go along this row and get rid of this column. So I get 1, 5, 3, 1. And remember, this one now is negative. So minus 1, 5, 3, 1 there. The next one then, we go along this row and get rid of this column. So 1, minus 1, 3, 2. And this is positive now. So 1 minus one, three, two. Going along the middle row now, so we get rid of this row and this column. So I get zero, two, two, one. And remember this one is negative now. So minus, so what did we say? Zero, two, two, one. Keep going then. So this one now will be positive. We get rid of this row, this column. So I get one, two, three, one. So one, two, three, one. The next one then, we get rid of this row and this column. So 1, 0, 3, 2. And remember, this one will be negative now. So 1, 0, 3, 2. And then I'll just give the final row here. Again, just be careful with your signs as you go. The middle one will be the negative one on this row here. So in the bottom left, you should get 0, 2, minus 1, 5. For this one here, remember, this is negative. You'll get 1, 2, 1, 5. And then for our final 2 by 2 determinant here, we get 1, 0, 1, minus 1. So that's a 0 there. And there we have it. So that's all of our 2 by 2 determinants. So all we need to do now is evaluate the determinants. And again, in the interest of saving time, I have already evaluated these determinants. But again, um, if you haven't already attempted this, just quickly have a go now. Make sure you can attempt these 2 by 2 determinants. So given the result that you should get here, top left will be minus 11, 14, and 5. So that's our top row. For the middle row, we'll get 4, minus 5, minus 2. 
And for the final row here, we'll get two, minus three, and minus one. So there we have it. So that's our cofactor matrix. We now need the adjoint, in this case, the adjoint of the matrix Q. So the adjoint of Q. Remember, for the adjoint of Q, we just take the transpose of this matrix. So to save a bit of room here, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transpose it straight away. So remember, this row becomes this column. So let's just start doing this. So that's minus 11, 14, and 5. Now we take the middle row, and that becomes the middle column. So it's going to be 4, minus 5, and um, so it's 4, minus 5, minus 2. And then finally, the last row becomes the last column. So we're going to get 2, minus 3 and minus one there. Okay, so that's the adjoint of Q. And then finally, all we need to do now is take the adjoint matrix here, the adjoint matrix of Q, and then times that by one over the determinant. So for this question, we got the determinant was minus one. So if we take the reciprocal of minus one, we're gonna get one over minus one, so that would give us minus one. So in that case, let's just note this down here, Q inverse, well, that's going to be equal to 1 over the determinant. So like we said, that would be minus 1 times by the adjoint matrix here. So minus 11, 4, 2, 14, minus 5, minus 3. This wasn't the cleanest matrix ever, but 5, minus 2, minus 1. Okay. So now, when I times through here, I'm going to get, basically, the signs are just switching. So I'm going to get... 11 in the top left, minus 4, minus 2. I'm going to get minus 14, 5, 3. And then finally for the last row, I'm going to get minus 5, 2, and 1 there. And there we have it. That's our solution. So like you can see, the questions are quite lengthy in the working. I'm actually running out of room here, but that's what we should get. So you should get 11, minus 4, minus 2, minus 14, 5, and 3. And then finally, minus 5, two and one there and there we have it so let you see it's not the easiest um part of work of working that we've done with matrices but hopefully this video has helped you with finding the inverse of a three by three matrix